Hello, hello. Hoping everyone can hear me. I'm just going to do this. There we go. Um, I see uh, Jeanette is here. Uh, thanks for showing. Uh, let me know if you can hear me clearly. That would be great. Um, I'm really hoping this will be like one of the first live streams where everything works. Um, and um, you can actually hear me and my phone doesn't cut out. I've done a whole bunch of work to see if it'll work better this time. Um, let me just do this. Hi, Angelica. Nice to see you. Um, nice to see you uh, watching from Austria. And um, thinking about a lot of people right now who are <clears throat> in uh, Germany and, of course, neighboring countries where the weather has been absolutely crazy. Uh, all these floods and, uh, you know, we actually had a small tornado uh, north of Toronto uh, just yesterday. A number of homes really badly damaged, a few people injured, um, but it sounds like it's worse in Germany. So it's just really awful. It's just terrible uh, what's going on. Maybe nature is trying to tell us something. Maybe we need to listen. Uh, and nice to see you. Um, <clears throat> and um, I'm happy when everyone's, you know, showing up, or a few people at least are showing up to watch this, so I'm not just talking to myself. Although, I know how to talk to myself too uh, when I'm working. I don't know if it works this way for you, but um, when I'm painting, sometimes I have like this conversation, and um, uh, the, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm talking to myself as I'm painting and saying, you know, why did you do that? And how come you didn't do that? And why didn't you take the time to actually mix the color properly? Um, and how come, you know, you picked this subject because this is a tough subject. Why didn't you pick something easier? Um, so, <clears throat> you know, there are all these conversations that go in our heads. And I think it's really important to, you know, take your time and prepare yourself as much as you can. Of course, things go wrong. Uh, but knowing how to fix them is also important. So, um, yeah, be patient with yourself. Sometimes we, we're our own worst critics. We beat ourselves up, you know, when things are not going well. And um, we sort of, uh, um, you know, it, <laughs> it takes a certain amount of ego, I guess, or determination or, or uh, maybe confidence. I don't know what it is to say, you know, I can really do this. I, I, I can do some good painting. So um, it's really, uh, it's really important not to, to beat yourself up uh, when you're, you're working. Give yourself some positive feedback as well. Hi, Rita. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we were just talking about this concerned about uh, um, those in Germany and the Netherlands and Belgium too. Um, it's really, uh, it's really tough, you know, when, uh, we're trying to get by after this year of, of COVID and all of these things that have been happening and then, you know, nature has turned against us, uh, or has just, it's just doing its thing. Nature does its own thing and we have to f try and figure our way around this and we need to respect it. So, um, uh, I don't want to get into too much about that. We all have our opinions about it, but I really do think that um, nature always wins. So um, no matter what we do, um, nature always wins. We need to respect that. Um, someone said once that nature is always trying to kill us. And that sounds kind of, you know, brutal, but actually it wins because, you know, we're we're only on this earth for a certain amount of time and um, uh, nature has its way with us and, and eventually we get older and that's it we we go so while we're here um, I think it's important to do what you love to do if possible uh, painting is one of those things I love to do and I love to share what I've learned um, over the years and uh, uh, hopefully some of these things that I'm showing you are things that you can use um, and if not, maybe someone else can use. So uh, that brings me to, you know, pass the link on to friends or people who you think might be interested or share. Uh, give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting more subscribers. I'm really happy about that. 
it seems like uh, when I'm looking at the statistics that um, people are watching for a longer period of time. Um, maybe, you know, they're not getting bored or, or maybe, you know, it's just on in the background. That's okay too. I don't mind. Um, and you can always watch it later as well. So, but I really do appreciate the support that I'm getting. Ina, it's nice to see you. Um, <clears throat> all right. So uh, today's live stream is about um, the abstract and figurative and, and kind of where they meet each other. Um, I like abstract paintings. Uh, I like figurative paintings, of course, too. But, um, you know, a good abstract painting is something that's kind of hard to pull off. It's not really easy to, to do a good abstract painting because we're taking one part away that uh, the figurative artist is working with. And that, that part is the subject that's in front of them, um, whether that's from a photograph or whether they're painting from life or, you know, um, maybe they're doing a portrait of someone or, or they have a model that's sitting um, <clears throat> when you take that away and you're left with just your own mind, your own imagination, um, it's a challenge because, uh, you don't have any sort of parameters. You don't have any guidelines, uh, to, to, to sort of get you started. And, um, this is a, a longer subject, um, which I won't get into right now, but creativity actually comes from limitation. Um, and I may have mentioned this in a previous stream before, but um, if you limit yourself, then it forces you to resolve problems. And actually, painting is all about resolving problems on a, a regular basis. You know, is the color right? Is the value right? Is the drawing correct? Um, those kinds of things, those things that we typically sort of... Um, limited to when you're painting figuratively, if you're painting something that's recognizable, that dictates or tells us what it is that we have to do in order to um, create an image that's believable or something that, you know, people might appreciate. And the recognizable says, well, you know, my color is blue, you know, and in the light it's a little warmer, in the shadow it's a little cooler, um, it's a little darker in the shadow, this is my shape. These are my parameters. This, these are my outside lines. Um, and when we're working from something in front of us, it's actually a lot easier in some ways than it is to work on something that's abstract because abstract takes away uh, a lot of those uh, guidelines or those rules. You know, I, I don't have any outside lines yet. You know, I don't have a color yet. I don't have a, a value. I don't I, I'm not saying anything yet until you actually put something down. So one of the things that I like to do, um, if I'm working on an abstract, uh, I like to uh, go to figurative images as a start. And the funny thing is that, um, you know, very often I, ended up, I end up painting a figurative painting. But I like to look at the, the image that I have in an abstract way first. So in an abstract way, how do you look at something abstractly? Well, you can turn it upside down. I, mean, I did a previous uh, live stream on that, and actually that's quite a valid way of turning something into shapes instead of necessarily recognizable things. Um, but you, if you, you know, turn your image on an angle or, or so on, um, then of course it tends to abstract it because you're seeing it in a way that you haven't before and a way that you might not see it normally. But, you know, our minds, our eyes and so on, our brains figure out something pretty quickly, even when you take an image upside down. So getting yourself into the idea or the mode of um, balance and harmony and, you know, if I put a shape here, um, do I need to put another shape here or, or a little further away or, or closer? Should it be the same size, that shape? on the side. Um, you know, do they need to touch each other? Um, what do I need to, to give a relationship to those two shapes? Um, what are those shapes? Are, are they round? Are they square? You know, those kinds of things. Do I need sharp lines? Do I need soft lines or soft edges? Um, do I need a lot of contrast and value? So you can set up exercises for yourself uh, with this. You can take a figurative image, something that you recognize, 
and see if you can turn it into an abstract uh, first. And when I say turn it into an abstract, paint something that isn't recognizable but still contains the major parts of the information of that figurative piece that you're looking at. Um, I've actually, well, I've started when you can see this here. And um, this is, uh, uh, I took a photograph um, uh, when we were out walking. And um, there were some buildings, this is down near the waterfront, and there's some buildings here in Toronto uh, that are quite dramatic. Uh, there are some grain elevators, and they're very beautiful in a way. They're old, and, you know, they speak of a certain era. <clears throat> and, it, uh, you know, many times they take these old buildings down. Um, but I just, you know, in looking at the photograph, it sort of gave me some direction. It, it said, you know, there's some shapes here. There's some dark shapes in the foreground on the left-hand side. There are middle sort of values that are happening in this thing. And, and there, I like the verticals, the horizontals, and the sense of perspective uh, that I get from, from this abstraction. So um, I am going to take this to a more figurative finish. That's what I'm going to do. But I started with an abstract, and when you look at this, it probably isn't recognizable. I've just described the scene to you, so maybe you can put it in, you know, you can see this in your mind's eye. Um, but um, at, at this point in time, um, we're not really sure what we're looking at. So every piece of information that I put into this is going to give you more of a hint or disclose a little bit more of what this image is going to be as, I, as I'm working on it. And I find that that point from when you don't know what it is to, aha, that's what it is. And I, I get this a fair bit when I'm doing a charcoal demonstration for, for my students sometimes. So I'll just put charcoal all over the paper, and then I start taking lights out. I have an idea in my mind what I want it to look like, and so I start taking things away and uh, the, the, the dark areas away and leaving the light. And pretty soon a face comes out of that charcoal mess. And um, there's always this moment, you know, where people kind of go, ah, I know what it is. Now I know what that is. Um, because we organize shapes in a way so that we understand them, uh, so that we uh, are safe. You know, a lot of these things were we look at around us are you know or the way that our brain works is to always try and keep us safe you know there's a sharp edge be careful it's a soft edge i don't need to worry as much unless maybe it's a big rolling wave in the ocean who knows um so uh this point of transition i find really fascinating and there will be a point when i'm working um on this where you'll say ah okay that's what that is i, I at least i hope you'll see it that way and if i end up not being able to do this in a figurative way, and I end up with an abstract as a result of what I'm painting, I'm also happy with that, because if it, at least if it's an abstract that's worth looking at. Um, there are some, some pretty interesting uh, artists out there who, who basically kind of walk that thin line between the two, um, you know, it's abstract, but it's figurative, uh, or it's more figurative and slightly abstract. But there are, th there's this line that happens that is intriguing to me. Um, how much do you need to say to make it look like something we recognize? How much do we need to paint? Um, and how much can we leave out in order to still keep it that way? Or how much do we leave out so that no one ever understands that that is something figurative? So you can take something that is recognizable and basically use the shapes in it, put shapes down, and not explain more than that. And you end up with something that, that has some excitement as well. If I was just trying to create an abstract without any reference at all, um, well, I find it difficult, honestly. Um, this, to me, is as exciting an abstract as you can get without, uh, with reference. Um, and, you know, there are some people who seem to be able to uh, put down abstract images and do this very comfortably, and I'm not sure where they come from. I don't know what exercises they go through, and it's a conversation worth having with people who do that. So I'm going to get on. I've actually pre-mixed some colors. Um, I'm going to get onto this and show you uh, where I'm going to take this, and... Um, 
let's see see what happens with this. This is really fun. It probably won't take very long to do this. Um, what I have down on the canvas right now is just acrylic, which is dry. Um, so I'm going to be painting over that with oil because I can move that around a little more. So I'm looking forward to this. I want to say hello to uh, Andrew, uh, who's here, and Bernd. Thanks for showing up. This is really great. Um, why don't I just uh, 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 solo layout this thing here now? And um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to start painting into this. And again, at a certain point, you may recognize the, the shapes and, and maybe not. And I'm okay with that either way because I'm really more interested in creating an image that's exciting um, and uh, than I am in trying to recreate an absolute uh, that's in front of me. So I'm going to grab uh, a bigger brush here and just start to go into... Uh, some of the colors and start to define things a little more and again I'm working with oil uh, which I've pre-mixed ahead of time so I'm just going to start dropping stuff in here and I want to keep again keep thinking about the big shapes uh, I don't want to get too hung up on details right now that that would be that would take me to where I really don't want to go. And I'm using the reference. I'm not trying to be absolute about the reference either. When I say that, I'm not trying to make it exactly as I see it in my, my uh, reference, which is a photo. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting hung up on trying to make it look perfect. Whatever perfect is, I'm, not, I'm really not sure what perfect is anymore. So I'm just going to have some fun playing with this stuff and put some shapes down to create a bit of a rhythm. Rhythm is something that you can really use in abstraction uh, to create some excitement. Um, just dropping stuff in. I'm squinting as I do this, so uh, my eyes are half closed, um, and I'm, I'm looking at, at big shapes overall, the, the shapes that I see in the reference that I have, which is, by the way, a photograph which I've posterized somewhat in an app called um, uh, U, U Camera. I think I might have mentioned that in another uh, live stream, which is kind of a fun one. Um, I don't use it all the time, but I'm liking it. And you can also get some kind of posterization apps. In a way, you know, I'm kind of taking the idea of the last stream uh, which was about no tens, and and if you can simplify uh, your your images into a straight black and white, or maybe black and white with a couple of uh, variations of of value, you know, maybe a middle value or a lighter value. If you can do that, um, and it still holds, it still feels powerful. Um, chances are that's going to work really well as a uh, finished painting. Get your big shapes working first. And you'll see I'm letting the canvas here kind of, you know, find its textures. I, I like the textures. Um, this is something again with, so you've got, when you're working with abstract painting, of course, you're working with textures, rhythm, edges. I mean, all the same stuff that we use for something figurative, frankly. Um, but the difference being that uh, you don't necessarily have to end up with a recognizable object. I probably will by the time I'm done here. It'll be hopefully recognizable. I'm sort of aiming for that somewhat. But like I said, if it doesn't happen, um, I'm okay with that too. So I'm actually going to uh, get this black out of here and just build this thing with simple shapes. You know, the funny thing about painting this way is that it's not unlike um, when you're painting from life, because really, when you're painting from life, you're painting a model, say, in front of you, or you're doing some plein air painting or something like that. You want to be looking for the big shapes first, getting those in the right place. And if you do that, um, Eventually, all those big shapes, as you correct them and get them in the right proportion, the right place, they end up turning into something that we recognize. So 
um, it's sort of an abstraction is almost like the beginning of something figurative. So let, let's just see where this goes. Um, I don't know if any of you uh, paint abstract paintings. Um, uh, when I say that, you know, we, we all actually do paint abstracts in a sense because the first few strokes that you put down, nobody knows what they are. Um, and in a way, if someone was to look at the first few strokes that you put down, they say, oh, that's, you know, you're painting an abstract because they don't know what you're painting unless what you're painting is right in front of them as well. So this is just a fun way of, of looking at your painting. It also takes a little bit of the fear out of a painting too, I find, because <clears throat> if you're working towards an abstraction, uh, it's harder for people to actually criticize or critique it. They, like, they either like it or they don't. That's what I figure. Um, and if it has something dynamic in it, something that's of interest in the shapes or the sizes or relationships of color, um, then um, it works just fine as an abstract. So, so right now I have almost the full range of values that I need in this. Um, I may bring in another color or two, but I'm going to keep it really simple in color as well, if I can. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to bring in one other color here just to see what happens up against this. Yeah, that's kind of nice. There's, there's a little bit of a, a darker color in my reference that goes into this area. And I'm trying to break up uh, some of these shapes so that they're not um, so consistent. It's nice to, to break them up and, you know, play with these things so that uh, there's interest in the brush strokes as well. Uh, that's, I think that's an important thing. You know, you want to keep some interest going in your brushwork. And I'm putting some fairly thick oil down here um, in places, and I like the textures that are coming up. I'm working with a, a little bit of a larger brush, one that doesn't feel, well, it feels like I have to be simple in my application. Let's put it that way. Um, all right, I'm going to go back into this color here and just pull these edges together a little more. It's kind of fun to try and get rid of lines. So the black lines that I have in here, I don't really need them. I can always bring them back again if I want to, but I don't really need them. Uh, it's fun to break them up so that the eyes moving around the subject. I think that that's, that's a good thing when you can get the eye to move around the viewer's eye. I already have color underneath. And again, because there's color here, I'm working into something. So um, that something that I'm working into gives me a sense of the values that I need um, and uh, value relationship that I need. And again, when I'm talking about values, those of you who have been painting and who've you know watched some of my other streams, you know that I'm talking about how light or how dark things are. So that's I'm always squinting all the time just to try and simplify my darker shapes uh, and my lighter shapes against each other. With just this little bit of preparation time that I've put in, you know, I spent a couple of hours mixing paint colors um, to try and get them working together, um, getting that harmony uh, together in the colors as much as I could. Um, it's really worth taking time to do that because then that takes some of the confusion out of the equation when you're actually painting. So I like this light area coming in through here. I want to pick that light up um, in other areas. So because it's hitting this, this object over here, I want to pick it up in a couple of places. 
And again, you may not recognize this yet, or maybe you do. Uh, it, it, uh, it's, this is really fun when this is happening. Sometimes I get this sort of transparency that happens because I've got too much, um, or maybe I've got just the right amount of thinner on my brush. It's okay to let things drip, and it's okay to play with these things as you go as well. So, um, I, I like when the paint kind of goes down in a chunky way, you know, there's a nice feel to paint. It's sort of like any of you who uh, like to bake, um, you get this feel for how the dough is, you know? How, how does it feel in your hand? How does the spoon feel when you're mixing things around? <clears throat> and when you've been painting for a while, there's a certain fluidity or viscosity, if you want, um, with the paint. And that's it's nice to sort of just play with that, see what happens with it. And again, because this is on acrylic, I can take drips away if I don't like them. So uh, let's go into this color here and start to pull some of these shapes together. And you'll notice I'm not really working so much from dark to light. I'm not doing that, which is more the tradition of painting, really. Um, I'm happy just to, you know, work the whole uh, canvas over uh, as I go. And uh, just uh, kind of let this thing evolve. Uh, I'm looking at this and I find this takes my eye too far over here. So I'm going to, I'm going to, this is just a, a decision. I'm going to reduce that down so that maybe um, that angle here is a little less um, severe and still takes our eye into the subject. So we have a little bit more of a path here. So these are things that you can do again if you're looking at something abstractly um you don't have to get into fussing with lots of detail things at this stage it's not important um, because you want to get the overall working all right uh let's see i'm going to go into this color up here You can see the texture of the canvas is really coming through on this. It's a little rougher texture than I usually like to work with, but because this is somewhat abstract in the way that I'm approaching this, these textures are okay. There's nothing wrong with it. When I pre-mix some of these paints, um, I try to get a sense of how much paint I'm going to need of a certain color, but uh, very often I'll run out um, and I need to, to get more going. Um, it's always good to have more paint than what you really think you're going to need, so be generous with it, something I can recommend. Um, I sh hopefully I'll be okay with this one, should be, uh, with this enough of this color. Uh, the other thing that's really a, a great thing to do working this way is working with a palette knife that kind of forces you to um, get into, you know, textures that you wouldn't get with your brush. The combination of the two is nice. Um, I find the combination of, of palette and brush really gives you a nice feel. So it just, again, creates some variety. 
that you that doesn't feel sort of manipulated as much. Um, keep it keeps it fresh. You start getting into a lot of fiddly brush work, and it starts. There we go. Hopefully we're in. As you can see, um, my technology still isn't working brilliantly. So uh, I'm sorry about that. Man, I thought I had it resolved today. I, every week I go through this. So if I cut out, I'll come back to you as soon as I can. My apologies. It's just really brutal when this happens for me. I can't stand it. I think my phone gets tired or gives up or I don't know. It's got its own little shut off somehow. Maybe one of these days I'll figure it out. But meantime, I'm just going to keep painting away. And hopefully you're able to hear me okay. Last time I cut out like this, um, you couldn't hear me. So I'm... Um, Hoping my mic is actually at least working this time. Um, I do, if nothing else, I do like the colors that are going on here. They're warm, they're inviting, and uh, fresh. Again, trying to get into a bit of palette knife work. Got lots of stronger edges going in this right now. Not being afraid to put lots of paint down because you can always remove it if you want to later with the palette knife and rags and all that stuff. That's one nice thing about oil paint. Uh, I find painting with acrylic is nice initially because it forces you to get lots of paint out there, mix it up, put it down and uh, leave it alone. Okay, this is probably uh, trying to take shape for you guys are starting to take shape. Um, I'm going to go into some more darks that I see over on this side here. Now I'm actually not trying to be very accurate with the scene. Uh, I'm just looking at shapes right now and hoping to keep them interesting. Um, because I feel like it might work, I don't know. I'm, I want to bring a darker color down through here to create a little bit more drama in this area. Again, thinking abstractly, I'm not trying to think figuratively here. That's getting a bit of glare, so sorry about that. Welcome, Carl. Petra, it's nice to see you. Um, sometimes I say welcome to you more than once here. Well, maybe you're twice as welcome. I don't know. Anyhow, I'm just happy that people are showing up and hopefully you're learning something and getting something out of this. And hopefully you can hear me. Um, I, since my machine cut out, hopefully you can still hear me okay. And we're missing Sasha also this for your evening there in Europe. Hopefully he's okay. Um, 
there's some interesting little shapes and red bits that I'm kind of happen in this zone here for me. Um, red is one of those colors that really grabs us, it gets our attention, and it doesn't take much of it to, you know, give us some energy uh, in a painting like this. So there are points where I sort of feel like I need to be more accurate and other areas not so much. So it's, again, really, it's an intuitive process, this. I uh, mentioned how red gives you this kind of energy. I sort of want to get something going even in the, the shadow area through here if I can. And... I want to take some of this, sh break this shadow, this sharp edge that I have here up a little bit. It softens there, so our eyes let in this way. May have gone a little overboard on that. It's okay, I can just pull that off. I can just scrape that away. And I actually like some of the shapes that are left behind, a bit of a ghosting of the image. Who knows what that is? I, I don't mind if it, we don't understand it. We'll figure this out, hopefully. At the moment, I seem to be getting more paint on my hands than I am on the canvas. That's interesting. I've got a great big paper towel here that gets in the way of my hands sometimes. Okay. a little bit of light hitting an area over on the left hand side here and I'm just going to drop that in. <clears throat> Again, I'm not trying to create something too figurative. Uh, I'm starting with this idea of abstracting it first and maybe it'll turn into something recognizable or you know more recognizable or not. I'm okay either way. So I just want to get a play of dark and light, <clears throat> some shadow areas that seem to work. Um, just play with the color, keep pushing it around, but in a way where, you know, you're feeling where it should go. It's not just about, you know, what's in, in your image. It's about trying to create some balance, some rhythm, um, and make that work. Again, trying to keep it fresh, just chunk it in. Don't fuss with it. Leave it alone. Drop it in where you think you need it and play. Keep playing. Maybe I'll smooth that out a little bit right there so it's a little less, a little less fussy. A little more definition up here. Now we'll look at it small on my screen. Um, it's um, it looks okay when it's smaller. So it's 
If it looks okay when it's smaller, chances are it looks okay when it's bigger. That's always a good thing to check out. You know, you, we have our cameras, right? So on our phones. So one of the things that's good to do is just to check your your work with your phone now and then. Look at it really small and see if there are any really obvious areas that are just, you know, standing out too much, I would say. Um, and if they are on your phone, then they, they also are on the larger painting. So that's just something to be thinking about, you know. Um, if it's not working small, why would it work when it's larger? That's why doing a little study or a thumbnail ahead of time is always a really good idea because you can figure out what it needs uh, at the smaller stage and then try and translate that into something larger. Trying to keep clean color here. It's a challenge to, to try and keep it really clean. Um, you know, it means putting more paint down and just going with it. Just go for it. And see if you can create something that has some believability. You know, put it down with confidence. Don't be afraid to just chunk it in and leave it alone. You go through more paint, but you end up with a nice result, hopefully. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, it's um, um, it's it somehow has that feeling of finish even right from the start. Like I could really leave it almost at any stage. Um, I'm going to try and take it further um, because I think it it could be stronger if I do. And uh, Jeanette, yes, the internet has a lot of trouble. We're in a building where there are a lot of people using internet in this condo that we're in. In the next weeks, we won't be here anymore. We're going to be moving. And I'm hoping that when, when we're in our own space, um, that it will be less of an issue. Let's hope. Because it just cuts out way too often for my liking. Letting edges wrap around other edges here. That's what I'm trying to do so that there's a sense of containment in the abstraction. So, you know, in this sky here, I want, I shouldn't even say it's a sky yet. It's just an abstract, right? <laughs> I'm giving it away. <clears throat> um, but having one shape wrap around another and contain something gives us something interesting to look at. It's not just you know, a straight, flat, anything. Um, unless you're trying to go with a minimalist approach, um, all these little shapes create kind of patterns and rhythms and so on. And I think that uh, that keeps a certain energy going through a painting. So you go back to some of these little reds that I see, just to throw a little more excitement over here. And I'm going to go with a strong red through this area here to anchor that area right there. If any of you um, uh, know William Ray, W-R-A-Y, if you know his work, you see it on uh, Facebook a lot, and I'm pretty sure he has Instagram and all of that. But he has a remarkable way of um, putting these bold, simple shapes without giving the whole story away. They're abstract and very colorful, really strong colors and very beautiful. Um, bold, like super bold. And, uh, you know, you can learn a lot from artists like this because 
uh, they've explored these subjects. They know these subjects. And William is one of those guys who really knows what he's doing when it comes to this stuff. And um, it's good to look at other artists' works who are doing these sorts of things to learn from them. You can always learn from other people. Always. Keeping an open mind. It's very important. Um, I learned so much from Stefan when I was working with him in Vienna and still learn from him. You know, we're constantly back and forth with each other. And uh, uh, we are always learning things from each other. If you have someone you can paint with or you can talk to about your painting, that's a really great thing because, you know, too often we're working in our own spaces. We don't have a lot of feedback or input from other people. It doesn't mean that they're always right. It's just that it, it creates a discussion. Right. So if you can talk to someone about your work um, and get some input or encouragement, even sometimes that's all you need is a bit of encouragement to say, you know what? I really like what you're doing. Not everything that you're doing, but like keep up, keep doing that thing that I like. And it's not that we try to pander to other people's likes. That's not what we're doing. But if you're a person who likes to learn, um, why not? Why not? Listen to what others are saying, learn from them when you can, and take what works for you and don't take the things that don't work for you. So um, develop yourself uh, along with other artists. You know, everyone's going to paint differently. There's no two ways about that. Take a room full of artists and they're all going to paint something different, even if it's the same subject. So... Um, Okay, uh, sort of feel like I've gone a little bit fussy in this area here. I'd like to simplify it even more. I'm going to bring some darks into that just to give that a little more weight. I have no idea what that is. I'm just doing it because it feels like it needs it. All right. Use, use the reference as a guide, not, not as a crutch. Don't, don't feel that you have to do what's in front of you. It's not always the, the best way. Um, okay, I'm going to actually throw in, uh, just because I'm going to go to the Anders Zorn side of this palette and use a bit of... Um, ivory black and um, uh, cadmium red and titanium white and that's going to give me a violet in here so I'm going to just try this just to create kind of a half tone area that divides the shadow from the area where it goes into light and because there's some there I'm going to go a little darker and maybe drop some down in this area here. And again, that's not in my photo reference. You can't see my photo reference, I realize. But it's not there. I'm, I'm just right now trying to put things in that might create more interest in areas that are a little bit dull. Okay, I'm going to take that same color and maybe drop a little down into this area here. Just open this up so this shadow area isn't just overwhelming. And again, there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing now. I'm really, truly looking at this in an abstract way. Um, does it strengthen it? Does it does it make it worse? You know, do I need to go back in and strengthen it again in some places? That's okay. Uh, you know, that's the joy of working this way. 
a few little details now. Um, let's just see how this goes. I'm going to try and pick up, I'm going to have to squeeze out a little more paint here because uh, I wasn't using enough ivory black. So let's just get a little more going. If you have any questions while I'm painting away and yakking away here, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, I have a, a few as a result of these live streams. Um, I have a few, just so you know, um, a few uh, people who have contacted me um, who want advice on their painting. Um, you know, they, you can send me a photo of your work. Um, I do charge for my time, um, you know, when I'm instructing. So, um, but it's reasonable. I can always negotiate a price with you that's comfortable. Um, it's usually around uh, 50 euros an hour, but um, if you want any advice or you've done some painting and you just don't know where to take it, um, I do that, just so you know. And uh, this stuff here I'm doing for free, of course, um, but when I'm doing work for other people specifically, I do charge and I'm happy to help you out if I can. I don't want to turn this into an advertising program, but you should know that it's available if you want, or if there's someone else that you think might be interested. Um, and I enjoy it, by the way. It's kind of fun to, to teach. I actually really like teaching, and I like sharing some of the stuff others have taught me. So uh, it's fun but it still works so I'm happy to do that okay so this is getting a little more interesting there's a little more detail it's a little more figurative now it's starting to show you what this is uh, gonna start to bring in a little more texture in a couple of areas Maybe up in here, maybe here. If you want to see what these kinds of buildings really look like, um, you can check out a friend of mine's work. His name is Chris Temple, and um, he does some really amazing old structures like this there these are green elevators maybe you can tell by now and if not that's okay too um, but his approach is quite realistic and they're very beautiful they're huge paintings and um, he's really made a name for himself doing these things so uh, if you were to look him up chris temple artist um, you'll find him And his approach is very different from what I'm doing right here. Okay, so this is uh, starting to get to a point where it's, you know, really becoming more figurative. It's more understandable. Um, and I like it at this stage because, you know, it's kind of, well, it's still abstract in a sense, but it's not over the top. Um, it's not so obvious. There's still areas that we have to try and figure out. Um, I can start to bring in a very small amount of detail in a couple of places, and it takes our eye into the painting. Um, Just right now, squinting down a lot, trying to pick out, pick up on the most important areas that I think need a little bit of light, a little bit of rhythm.
without getting really hung up on too much information. And I've got lots of paint left. It's really also really tempting when I have a lot of paint left just to throw it on. But, you know, you want to have some control in it too. So I can really chunk some paint in to areas that I want to have a little more texture. Texture tends to be something that you see more in the foreground, uh, less in the background. So that's something to be aware of. I want to clean this area up a little bit through here. Anytime now my phone's going to want to kick out. So I'm going to actually see if by touching the phone, it might kick out when I do that. Um, just moving this a little bit lets the phone know I'm still alive. Hopefully that works. Of course, it shakes everything around too. <clears throat> Like a, a moving painting. Okay. Now I'm going to just try and create a few edges that give us a little more information about what's going on back here. Again, without getting too fussy about details, um, it's the play of the vertical and the horizontal that makes me interested in this whole image. I want to keep shapes that keep me interested when I'm looking when I'm looking at it. Um, Picking up on a few of the little reds that I see here and there, or that I want to see here and there. It's really a fun thing to get some real paint going down on a surface because um, there's something about loads of paint down that gives you this feeling of, you know, solidity and believability. So um, I really like getting into that um, because I feel that you you have it's it's because it, if it's done with confident paint the painting has strength it's okay to have some transparent areas also that's quite fine but um when you have a good chunk of paint down your the light is not passing through the paint it's actually stopping at the surface of the paint so when you're working transparently as the old masters did um they worked very thinly and then built their lights up into the thicker areas. That's what they did. And um, a lot of that had to do with how much work it was to make paint back then. It was expensive and it was hard to make. You know, you practically had to be a chemist to do it. So they would work with very minimal amounts of pigment and, and yet maximize the amount of effect that they could get out of it. And if you look at a Rembrandt painting, of course, you know, it's very thick in the lights, but very thin in the shadow areas, quite transparent. So it creates that effect of looking into transparency, which again is quite lovely. But a lot of modern painters now are working primarily with heavier paint. So um, <laughs> I'm seeing the comment, a screaming building on the right, and this is great. Um, that's really fun. I like the idea. It's a, it's a maybe an angry building that's fun i should put 
I should put some lights in the windows up here and it'll look like eyes, but then I get a little too ridiculous. But what I think I will do, though, is maybe pop a couple of more windows over here. They are in the building I'm looking at. Again, just putting it in with a palette knife because it creates more of a random feel when you when you put something down with a palette knife. It's accurate and loose at the same time. It's funny how that works. The Screaming Building. I think that's what I should call this painting. The Scream. The Screaming Building. And I just want to take away that top edge a little more. There we go. Again, you should have a, a look at William Ray's work when you have a chance. He, he does this stuff so well. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Carl. This is really, um, this way of working is really fun because it, it does bring the viewer into it in a different way. You are, we are forced to try and figure it out, right? So... Um, I like that idea because then the viewer is actually participating in the painting. If they're interested, you know, people sometimes look at it and say, oh, it's just a bunch of, you know, paint on a canvas, and I'm not really interested. I don't want to make the effort. Um, but um, somehow or other, our brain is curious about these things. And if it is appealing, and there are shapes that are nice that are working in it, um, then it attracts our attention and it, it involves us and it complements the viewer. That's what it does. It says, you know what, you're smart enough to figure this out. What is this? And do I want to keep looking at it? Are there areas in it that are intriguing? Are there areas that, that appeal to me that, you know, I, I want to keep figuring it out? Um, that's interesting. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it kind of feels like maybe another building in the background. Um, you know, what is that texture? What does it mean? Um, so um, I, do, I do like when a painting doesn't tell the entire story. I know I've said that a lot in these, in these live streams. But when, the, when you tell everyone everything, um, then, well, the story's over, right? And then you move on. So... If you can keep the viewer interested in your image, um, they'll come back to it. I, I showed at the Toronto Outdoor Art Show many years ago, and it was always amazing to me that people would come back after many, um, uh, many years, actually, because I didn't show every year. Um, they'd come back and they'd say, you know what, I remember a painting that you did. Um, and it looked like this, and they would describe it to me. And I was always fascinated with this because they literally kept a, a, a mental picture, kept that image in their memory for all those years. And I always thought, isn't that neat? Like some of them I couldn't even remember. I guess I painted a lot of paintings, but, you know, they would say, oh, yeah, and it looked like this, and there was such and such in it. And I always found that really fascinating. Like, with all the things we have to remember on an ongoing basis for them to actually remember a painting that you've done, I think that's a really the ultimate compliment in a way. Maybe some of them remembered them because they were horrible too. I don't know. I'm sure that happens. It's like, wow, that same artist did that crap? That's okay. We don't always turn out great pieces. In fact, they're a very rare thing when they happen. So, <clears throat> so I'm getting to the stage now where I, I really don't want to take it too much further because I think if I do, I might start falling prey of my own uh, 
issues, which is to put too much into it. Too much can really kill a painting. So um, I'm going to just drop in a couple of more spots. Maybe I'll fiddle with this a little bit later. I Probably not too much, because I really do want to keep this freshness, if I can. And um, I want to, I'm going to bring in something I don't usually do. I'm going to try it, which is white, pure white, because it's going to be cool. Actually, I'm going to bring just the slightest amount of warmth into it, but I want a really super light value here. Uh, and just see if I can pick up one more value that just takes us into this area a little more. Maybe it picks up right in here. It's the area that has the most information going on in it, somewhat. Um, and uh, so in the areas that have the most information, in theory, that's kind of like your detail, but it doesn't have to be detailed. You can just put information, uh, you know, a few bits and strokes and pieces uh, and still hold the viewer because they're trying to figure it out. Okay. Um, there's another thing sometimes I like to do, um, and this is, I don't know if I should do it on this one or not. Maybe I will save that for a future live stream, because this is strong enough on its own, I think. Um, sometimes I like to take the palette knife and, and run it through the entire image, um, and that creates some fun texture things that can make a, the painting look really uh, fresh. But I think for this one, I'm going to leave it. You know, there's a, a point where you, you have to trust where you're going to leave it, where you're going to fuss with it. So I don't want to get a too smooth looking, you know, it's a chunky subject. That's what it is. So the subject itself should sort of dictate the kind of technique that you're, you're going to use. Like I wouldn't be painting, you know, a baby's portrait this way. Probably not. Um, but, you know, for a big chunky building like this, um, it works. Um, because there's a lot of strength and power in, in the structure. So I can, I can actually get away with this kind of, this kind of texture, that amount of paint. You can see I just got, got a little bit of red in. A little bit of red goes a long way here. So I want to be careful I pull that out. There we go. And I can go back into that. Just squeeze, using the palette knife, squeeze the color up against the edge. Pull it away. And that'll give me a nice clean edge. I don't even mind when that kind of thing happens sometimes, but we'll get rid of that. Uh, again, I want to have nice, strong color that I'm not looking through. I don't want to look at the canvas underneath. I want to keep the sky fairly opaque through here. And I can even bring in other colors into that. I actually overmixed a few paints here, and I can bring more color into the top of this that will still work and cover over the texture of the canvas, which I really don't want to see in this area. Don't ask me why, just don't want to see it there. I think it feels stronger without that texture. Keep the texture in the in the building area. That's the idea. I'm going to go back in with a little bit more color in these areas here. I'm almost done. So you can So just so you know I don't want to keep it going forever here. All right. So, all right. Um, 
I think I'm going to call it there. What time is it? Okay, 3.10. So it's not a super long, you know, evening um, and um, for you guys and not a super long afternoon for me. My, my phone seemed to hang in. I'm af almost afraid to say so for the second part of this. So that's good. Um, I'll post this and um, with a link if anyone wants to watch it again. I'm going to come back to you and just, um, again, say thank you. I uh, really do uh, appreciate you showing, and I'm hoping that that was kind of interesting and kind of fun for you. Uh, it was fun to paint. I enjoyed that. And um, I really do appreciate you showing up. Thank you. Uh, again, um, uh, if you haven't subscribed, if you're watching this and haven't subscribed, um, we're getting close to the 500 subscription. Uh, level where I'm going to be giving away a painting um, and um, uh, that's going to be a random draw and um, please uh, thumbs up if you like it um, repost the link if you like it uh, you know all of this stuff this is number 26 that I've done now so um, I can't believe it's been that many wow already um, I've had really good response um, from uh, from YouTube and you know comments and so on. I really do appreciate it um, Thank you um, and um, uh, Try this way try try working abstractly uh, You know take an image that you recognize and see if you can break it into really simple shapes Work with a palette knife keep your drawing simple keep the value simple and um, uh, Play this way just try Okay, I'm back again. <laughs> um, sorry, I spoke too soon. My phone kicked out on me again. Um, anyhow, um, so sorry about this technology. Um, uh, as I was saying, uh, even if you do a very small uh, study and work this method, give that a try. See if you like if you like working this way, and um, you know, love to see what you do. You can send it off if you want to. Again, thanks. Uh, really appreciate uh, you showing up, and we will see you next week. Um, have a good week and stay safe. Bye-bye.